Well, hello YouTube, another day in the shop. <laughs> so today, man, uh, yesterday was arts and crafts day. Today, we're going to uh, be doing this right here. <laughs> my nose, yeah. no, no, we're gonna be picking my nose. We're actually gonna be doing this right here. Um, have a couple ideas though, change of plan. I saw a video from another RV10 builder on a way that he folded the um, the the elevator trim tab outer edges and and everything, so I'm gonna follow that and I'll kind of post what I'm going to do, how I'm gonna do it based upon his video. And uh, it's a little bit different than the plans that I showed here, but uh, same same concept or same idea, and it was a really good. Good video, I think it will work actually better. You don't have to go through all the gyrations. More importantly, it is repeatable, which is always a good thing uh, when when working on uh, on parts. The fact that you gotta make these folds one, two, three, four, four times, eight times total because you got two, so it's four per time with two. So, um, so we'll, we're gonna see. So that's what we're gonna do today. Nothing, nothing great, nothing, crazy just uh working through it you know that's the part of building an airplane that's a lot of rinse and repeat it's a lot of um i got a call coming in someone put them on hold so it's a lot of rinse and repeat uh, a lot of uh hurry up and wait <laughs> kind of things and everything but today it's very important that we get this done right so that way everything lines up correctly and it looks good on the plane these elevator tabs they, they go into the slots uh, on the elevator, so you want them to 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 kind of fill in. You don't want big gaps between the uh, elevator skin and the uh, and and the elevator trim tab. You want it to kind of be. Um, you're gonna have to have a gap because that trim's got to be able to move within that elevator. But you don't want a big gap because that will cause uh, disturb the air, and it will mess up your laminar flow. Uh, technical term there for pilots you know that laminar flow is the way that the uh, the air flows over the wing produces lift and everything pressures so you you want to dis you don't you want to create an environment that disturbs that air as less as, as least as possible so that's what we're going to do today so you guys know the routine you guys have been around long enough to know this plane's not going to build itself so i got to get to work all right youtube so this is what i am thinking and i've seen this done before in another video maybe i'll put a link here to the video that i'm referencing same concept so in the plans they have you basically put a wedge in this space here clamp it down and then do your bend now there is another builder that i've been following and unfortunately, they're no longer building their RV-10. They decided to get out of the RV-10 business. Or not business, but the building of it. So what he did is he took a steel bar, kind of like mine. He screwed his down and then actually broke it. So then he clamped it. So I don't think I have to screw it down. It's just, I, I can just clamp it. As long as it's clamped good enough that when I start banging or start forming on this, that I'm not moving it. So the instructions, though stay one thirty second from the edge. So what you do is you measure one thirty second in from this edge right here and then clamp it down and I'll do that. And then also from this edge here and then we're just gonna bend this up. I think that's easier than going through. And, and, and like I said, I, I saw him do it and it was very easy for him to do it and to get it precise. Uh, more so than this. I know a lot of builders have been having problems with this method here with the clamp and, all, and the wedge and all of that. So I'm gonna use his approach and that's what I am gonna do. I'm gonna measure off 130 seconds. I gotta get my precision um, square uh, ruler, put that in here, get this all done, get this clamp down with some of my clamps. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just kinda, kinda work it and see how it works. All right, here we go. So we got our piece of steel, got our elevator mounted in. 
We have measured in 1 32nd per the instructions. And it was nice of them to put this relief, this relief hole here, um, stress relief hole, so that we can measure in here. So we're 1 32nd in, and as you guys can see, it's ever so slight right here ever so slight and so now what we'll do is we will fold this piece up i don't oh that oh i don't like that see that is clamped so i gotta move my clamp a little bit closer here so I'll, uh, instead of moving it that way this piece because this should not be should not be moving around well this will be moving around but the piece itself should not be moving around see how that's moving around in there so I'll have to put a clamp here um, a little bit closer because we're gonna be bending this up. I, I think it'll be fine. This is more of a issue of the bench, maybe not being flat. I don't know, I have to look at that. But let me, let me secure that and then we'll get, uh, get the bending this, this up. But that's 1 32nd here, 1 32nd here. And apparently with that bend, that should put, the, per, put it perfectly in alignment. Yeah, so what I did is I put a clamp a little bit closer to the part and that actually locked it down. So there we go. So now what we'll proceed to do is I've got my rubber mallet here. I got my rubber mallet. I have a cowhide mallet over there and I have a dead blow there. But the instructions or what I saw the other gentleman do is that he actually used just a piece of wood and kind of moved it up. The, the key is, is as long as this piece is in there, yeah, see, I'm, I don't, I'm trying to think how we can do that. So I think what I'll do is I'll bend this up and then clamp. But I, let, let's see. I mean, we can only see, right? Um, the whole idea is once we get that crease in there, we'll be good to go. It's getting that initial crease in there. So as long as this holds up um, so we can get that initial crease into the end of the part, uh, we should be good to go. So let me uh, grab my block of wood and let's get to work. All right, so... As you guys can see over there, I got those two bent, and now I'm on this side. So wrapping up, a block of wood is probably your best method for doing this. Now I will tell you this: I clamp these down as good as I can. It still wants to move, but that's okay um, because what you're what you're gonna do, and you know, if you were doing this, perfect, I would probably mount some kind of a uh, um, focal point right here and just bend it up like a brake like we would do with a with a metal brake and do it but the, a block of wood is, is is perfect you can put this in there and you can use this and kind of bend it up by hand and just kind of work your way you definitely need some kind of rubber mallet or rubber hammer um, I'm not using I do have a deer hide uh, but I'm not going to use that because I don't want to tear this up. I like this guy. Uh, I also have a dead blow here. You could probably use a dead blow as well. But to be honest with you, um, using just a block of wood and folding it with the wood ever so gently. I can, it's kind of hard to do with, with one hand. But just kind of folding it up, you know, going along the seam and folding it up with a piece of wood. And then, and then helping it along with a rubber mallet. Um, works great and like I said I was able to get those two done on this side here I kind of move my I love these tables these benches because you can see um, how I was able to get that to, to form and if you look down that line it is perfect with and that's what you're going for is you want it perpendicular or you want it in a line with um, with these tabs and that tells you that, yeah so yeah so this method does work i think it's a lot easier and um it's probably the the better way for me it's the better way of doing it i know vans has their way and i'm sure there's a reason why but um yeah i saw this on another video and i felt that this was probably the best way and it's working so let me get this one done all right there we go two elevator trim tabs mocked up with the bracing in there now this is going we're going to put in here I've, we've got a bunch of drilling to do because we got to match it up with the elevator that slot out out there with those hole with the dimples here 
with the holes way up there I'll get stretch and then there's a piano hinge that will go into that and that that's this is what will attach the elevator trim to um, to the elevator itself and that allows you to adjust your 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 pitch of the airplane and um, and everything through through manual cables here is the connection point for those cables that do come out we'll connect to here now I do have to trim off this horn because we're only going to use this bottom horn so this top horn will get trimmed off and I'll do the same thing on this side but uh, yeah so the elevator so the elevators with the newly built clips that we made last night uh, going in and everything um, as far as bending these tabs I will tell you using this steel bar like I showed you in the other videos was I, I felt or I feel is probably the quickest and um, I thought it was very easy I don't know about the other way because I haven't done it so I don't know if it's easier but I will tell you that using um, a steel bar like this with rounded edges mine is rounded so you have, make sure you have rounded edges so you don't put too much of a crease but that allowed that to round over really well and then and then to do the alignment um, which is what you were going for you wanted this bend to be in alignment so everything is smooth and aligned and it is so that worked out i didn't notice well it's a different edge so i have to look at this so edge versus edge see how that one looks a little bit bigger and this one looks smaller so and that's what these clips are for that's why we have these so you can drive these down and kind of form that that edge a little bit better so that uh works really well one thing too, when putting on the elevator control arms, um, these pieces, I originally had them pointing out so there's a gap. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. They should come together. They should be together into one piece, if you guys can see that. Um, I'll go above it. So yeah, so they face inwards and they come together. Don't do what I did on my first iteration where I did them the other way where there was a gap between them. That's not how they go. So yeah, so there we go. We got the elevators, uh, the elevator trim uh, tabs. Uh, we got those mocked up and ready to go. So the next part is um, we do have to put in our foam blocks inside there. So the elevator trim, not, these are for the elevator, which are the big ones. The little guys are the elevator trim tabs. So we get we put three of these in per the instructions um wedge them in there and then we we actually glue them in or pro seal those in uh into the thing but we'll do that one like i said i'll do all the pro sealing all at once uh so um so yeah so we got these mocked up and these are ready to go i don't know how much of the priming i know i'll probably prime these outer pieces here this outer so this is kind of a dog or an s shaped um because like i said the reason why you don't have any rivets here is because this is where we put the piano hand so this is actually the orientation of this is going to go like that this is the top elevator and then we have the piano hinge which has to go and attach to that and so we're going to have to match draw all of those so that's going to be an operation um pretty significant operation there so yeah so i do this old school here hold this out here I don't have the selfie stick so yeah so we got the elevator we got the tabs bent and uh very happy like i said when doing the tabs make sure you let the 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 steel bar overhang don't line it up with the flat of the table let it overhang the table a little bit and that'll allow you to crease it um the not only the steel bar is important but make sure you have some kind of rubber mallet uh to tap those into place it doesn't take a whole lot and also your your block of wood once you um, get it clico together, your elevator trim tabs clico together, you can then go back with your rubber mallet and kind of tap, finish tap everything together with your clips on. And that kind of aligns everything and gets, gets the, um, the holes in alignment. So when you have to match, match drill everything because you're going to be putting rivets into these to hold those ends together, uh, that will get them to line up even better, you know, more so. So yeah, so we got the elevator uh, elevator trim tabs mocked up, which was my goal today. 
and uh, and everything. So uh, I am gonna call it a day. Go home, watch a little football, take a little break, um, you know, and get ready. My my week starts. Your week starts tomorrow. Uh, you know, hopefully I got a little tinge of uh, congestion going on, but um, you know we're staying away from people. We're social distancing now and and everything because they say that i guess next week is going to be five million people not going to show up to work tomorrow or next week is what they're estimating so i don't want to be part of that <laughs> be part of that group that number that statistic so uh so yeah we're going to stay away from people and just kind of take it easy and everything so like always i just want to say thank you for joining us joining me us me myself and i my own best friend no, actually, Sandy's my, my best friend, but uh, me, myself, and I into the shop today, keeping me motivated to get in here, get some work done. Hopefully, we hope that that, that end stabilizer, the, uh, the back stabilizer will get here so we can finish uh, or we can get going on getting that, uh, that elevator um, assembled and put together. And then once we get that assembled, then, we're, of course, we're going to uh, put the elevator trim tabs on and get that assembled so uh so yeah we do have some work i do um if you guys remember i do have to not a whole lot i just kind of swing around here i got to finish putting this is where the elevator control tim uh, uh control arms come through and as you can see there's a threaded um a threaded uh, aluminum piece that needs to be uh cleco down uh, other than that the rest of it's just screwed in so i can i have i have some things that i can do um until that horn but we're kind of in a holding pattern um and until that uh that uh, uh spar that back spar gets here and uh like i said uh, i know van shipped it because they don't charge you until they ship it um and once they charge you on your credit card or on your debit or whatever however you pay um that that means that it did get shipped uh vans is very good about that very ethical about that as a company so all right so with that being said i just want to say thank you for joining me once again in the shop be well be safe and like always you guys know god bless you